Hi friends, this is TimeNet SIPO Clap training videos and you are watching the training video for configuring IIS in Windows Server 2008 and this is also applicable for Windows Server 2008 R2 because both of them uses IIS 7, the version of IIS. IIS is Internet Information Services which is a web server provided by Microsoft to create and publish websites or FTP or file transfer protocol sites in your intranet or to the internet. IIS is also used for web servers like Exchange Server and SharePoint Server for their working. As I told you earlier this IIS can be used for hosting internal and external websites. For example if your company has an internal website for the employees uh, like a SharePoint website uh, through which they manage their documents and uh, a website which manages the day-to-day -day process of your company or whatever it is and uh, if your company has an external website which your client uses for accessing your resources or accessing uh, accessing the details about your your sales details about your company whatever it is uh, these both these types of websites can be created using IAS and it can be hosted in them and as I have told you uh, the, most of the application servers uses this IAS uh, you might have uh, heard of this exchange and SharePoint server which uses web-based interfaces for uh, for logging on to them and uh, accessing whatever resources like uh, emails or SharePoint documents or these kind of things so um, it's a very basic or very simple role in X Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 and um, so let's have a look at how uh, we can install and configure this IAS to host a website. I am now logged on to a Windows Server machine to which I have not installed any of the roles. If I click on roles in the server manager you can see I have not installed any of the roles. I can click on add roles to add a new role and uh, here I can see the list of roles that are there in this Windows Server 2008 R2 and from there I can click on the web server role and I can click next here I will get an introduction about the web server or the IIS what it what is the use of it and how can I use it when I click on next I'll get the role services which is actually uh, the separate role service separate services inside this web server which will work according to the application which you are using inside it so whenever you install an application server or whenever you are installing a, 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 any kind of servers which need the assistance of web server you have to select these role services according to the requirement of that particular application for example if you are installing exchange server there are there are some role services which are specific uh, for the exchange server so you can install it when you are in this window so for our purpose uh, we do not need any additional um, role services other than this default services which are al already selected in this window so you have to click next and here you can see a summary and when you click on install it will start the installation it will take less than one minute to get this installed and after the installation you will again get a summary of what you have installed you can close the window after that here you will get the summary of the installation you can close it and here you have the web server installed on this server to manage this web server you have a tool called Internet Informational Service Manager or IIS Manager. If you open this console, you will see the server inside that console, and if you expand that server, you will see application pools and websites. So, inside this sites, you will see one website called Default Website, which is the default website that you will have inside your IIS server when it is installed. So when you install IAS, a default website will be automatically created. When you click on the right side, there is an option called browse. When you click on it, you will be able to see it. But we will go to Internet Explorer and type in HTTP colon slash slash and the name of the server, which is winsvr2. And it will bring us the default website of IAS 7. So this is the default website which uh, IAS installs 
of its own and uh, even if you haven't configured the website or even if you haven't configured any specific uh, settings for the web server this website will be automatically configured and when you access it access the server using HTTP you will be able to see this website you have to give the exact exact name of the uh, web server after HTTP or if you have a DNS server if you know the IP address of this server you can type in the IP address also so you can access the website using three ways one is the NetBIOS name of the server the other is the DNS name if you have a DNS server in your network and uh, if you know the IP address you can access this website using the IP address also you can also access the website from the same server by typing localhost which will um, get give the query to the local IP address itself so you will get the same website you can um, right click on this website and you will get several options and uh, there is an option to stop this website so what we will do is we will stop this we have already stopped this website now by right clicking on it and uh, now we will try to add one website into this before going on to the addition of the website there is one more thing that you have to do you should be having a file an HTML file that you will use as the website page so I have this website page called website.html inside this directory website inside the C drive so that I can use this website page for my website so it, it resides inside the local disk C and if I open it I will see this page so this is the website that I am trying to host inside this IAS server so inside IAS manager you have to right click and make sure that the default website is stopped and after that you can right click on sites and click on add sites and you can give a name to the site this does not have anything to do with the name of the website through which we are accessing it it is just to identify the website with inside this IAS server manager like the name default website we are giving a name to identify this website inside the IAS manager after that you can give the physical path it means the path where you have saved the website files and that is the path inside the C drive and the website folder and uh, now you can give the binding whether it is HTTP or HTTPS or if you want to assign an IP address directly to that website I'll give all unassigned that means it will use all the IP address which are available there and uh, if you want to use a host name like www.condoso.com that you have to give it here but you need a DNS server working for it to use that option when I click OK a message will appear saying that the binding star colon 80 is assigned to another site if you assign the same binding to this site you will only be able to start one of the sites so this message is uh, related to the default website because we, we are already running a website in it default website even if it is shut down it exists there in the IES manager and it is configured to use the star colon 80 that means all unassigned IP address with port 80 that is the default port of HTTP uh, with it so uh, now we have a config because we have created a new site with the same setting all unassigned and the port 80 so that is the meaning of this message so you can ignore it by clicking on yes because the other website the default website is already shut down so you do not have to worry about it so I click on yes and now our website is started and running to make sure that everything is working fine you can just click on restart on the right side and uh, inside site you can refresh it once again now if you go to Internet Explorer and type in WinServer localhost or WinServer R2 you will get a message saying that the web server is configured to not list the contents of the directory HTTP error 403 forbidden if you try clicking on browse on the right side of the website you will get the same error this is because you haven't configured the default document of this website that means you haven't added the file which will work as the home page for this website 
so even if you have configured the directory where the website files reside you have to make sure that the file or the HTML page which you are using as your home page which should be added to your default document so I'll open the default document and uh, you can see the default list of home pages there you can click on add to add the new one and uh, give the name website.html and click on OK and uh, now just refresh the website and uh, if you click on browse you'll be able to see the website that we have configured so this is how you can configure the website if you type in the name also you will be able to see the website so our web server is up and running right now now we will go to a client machine and we will see how we can access this same website from a windows 7 machine which is running on the same network i'm now on a windows 7 machine and I'll log on as an administrator or any user I want and after logging in I will open the Internet Explorer and we'll check whether I am in the same IP range no, I am not in the same IP range. My server is in 1.0 IP range, 192.168.1.0. So I have to make changes to the IP address. I have given 192.168.1.20 to the client, and uh, now we are ready. We'll go to Internet Explorer and uh, type in HTTP colon slash slash 10, which is the IP address of my server and I'll press enter and I'll get the web page that I've created inside the server so I am able to access this website in the LAN I am using the IP address and it is all working fine so this is how you install create and manage your website using IAS this is the basic settings for IAS you can do a lot more than this using um, internet information services in Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 um, but in this video we just watch how we can install and configure a basic website inside IAS I hope this was informative for you and thank you for watching uh, for more video and online trainings please visit www.timenet.co.in and our Facebook page for our real-time training facility the CPOC lab uh, you can visit uh, the Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash CPOC lab and you'll get a lot of information about technology that we are using there thank you once again for watching